Discord. And off we go. So my name is Jeff Gumis, and I am from Crowded Learning. Uh, oops, actually, no, I'm now from World Education. Um, so this is both a reveal of the EdTech makerspace as well as a little change in Crowded Learning. Um, but today we are going to be talking about the EdTech makerspace, which is a professional development project that has just recently wrapped up that took place in July and August where educators learned how to use mobile-friendly educational tech tools while at the same time creating openly licensed resources. And we'll walk through all of that in a moment. So um, just as a sort of upfront note, um, CrowdEd Learning, or I, have taken a role with World Education at the Ed Tech Center at World Education which if you are not familiar with them, they have been leading the charge um, nationwide related to distance learning and blended learning strategies. Um, they were doing that, they've been doing that for years, but recently have uh, obviously, uh, it's, it's taken a greater need and purpose uh, in the midst of the pandemic. And so given there was so much alignment between what I've been doing over the past uh, couple of years with crowded learning, and what they are doing now, we are sort of joining forces. I am uh, taking a job as their digital learning lead. So we will be focusing on continuing to do professional development around ed tech uh, and distance learning and blended learning and trying to find some innovative ways to make both the professional development more immediately usable, but like uh, this project with the ed tech makerspace, making the resources that come out of it um, be uh, more usable to more people, which is one of the uh, purposes of uh, the EdTech makerspace in general. So very excited about that. Uh, more to come in, in the coming weeks and months in terms of just how that transition is going to shake out. But what we are going to do today uh, is a... Oh, thank you, Mary. Uh, so someone just actually popped in the chat. Someone asked if you need to sign up. You do not need to sign up for Wakelet uh, in order to grab the link here. It might prompt you to sign up. Uh, and here is the link again. I just pasted it in the chat. But uh, yeah, you, you can actually just access it as is. There's no need to sign up. But uh, I'm guessing or hoping after today's presentation and you see all of the great resources that um, uh, is anyone else not getting to the Wakelet? So just, I got a, are people able to access the Wakelet? So before I even move on, <laughs> this is at Tech. Awesome, okay, it seems like everyone uh, is able to access it. So hopefully um, whoever is having issues, um, just try again and um, we'll paste in. So we're getting lots of yeses in here. Let me chat the link one more time. Um, awesome, thank you. So uh, yeah, hopefully after today, you're going to wanna to sign up for Wakelet because it's a super uh, customizable tool that we can use to share EdTech resources and learning resources with students. So if, you're, if you've accessed the Wakelet, um, it should prompt you to sign up, but if you just go to Wakelet, um, right now, uh, and you, if you don't have an account, there sh it should be sort of a seamless process to sign up, I'm guessing somewhere in the top right or top left. We're not gonna walk through those steps today. I actually can't because I already have a Wakelet account. Uh, what we're going to be talking about today is just a quick walkthrough of the EdTech Makerspace. This was a professional development project that Crowded Learning has recently finished, as mentioned earlier. And just talk about the project format because um, we're excited about what's, what's been accomplished by this group of teachers and the resources that are now available widely to everybody, but we also recognize that um, just this process of, of running uh, professional development, not just with, with the sort of goal of training teachers on how to use something, but giving sort of a, a clear direction for everybody in terms of specific resource types that, that people want to be created, uh, a la quote unquote crowdsourcing, um, doesn't have to just be something that crowded learning does, but it could be something that you and your organization decide to run with your teachers. For example, uh, if you are all using Google Classroom, and so therefore you now want to use Google Forms for quizzes, 
um, instead of everyone randomly creating quizzes for the different things that they teach, sort of channeling everyone and focusing on different content areas and different skills for which you want there to be Google quizzes um, or resources that you're using to teach so that one teacher creates that quiz one time and then all 10 or 20 or however many teachers can actually use that quiz. And so just sort of we'll do a quick walkthrough of the format of how we ran the project um, so you can see uh, just sort of the, the, the thinking behind how to get sort of teachers this type of training. And then most importantly, we're going to spend some time on the results because again, a big purpose of this EdTech Makerspace was not just to provide that training for teachers, but to, as a part of that process, be developing a number of mobile friendly um, and engaging resources that students can immediately use uh, on their own or that teachers can begin um, integrating into their instruction in our current remote learning environments. So um, what is the EdTech Makerspace? So this came out of sort of an immediate need that we've obviously seen in the past few months around more EdTech tool training. Um, and I look at it as kind of a maze because it is, there's so many tools out there. It's not just understanding the how to, how to actually operate the tool, but actually how to actually meaningfully integrate it into what you're teaching. And so we've seen now that remote learning is not just a temporary thing. Um, this is something that's going to go on well beyond maybe what many of us thought would be the time frame that we'd be teaching from a distance. And even if it didn't, uh, didn't sort of continue and it ended tomorrow and we could be back in person, my hope is that as, as folks have learned how to use specific tools, that they're starting to see some of the affordances of, hey, like, I had to build this Quizlet for my students to just give them something to practice vocabulary, but guess what? You can still use that when you're back in class. Um, and so really thinking about how do we do this ed tech tool training so it's not just a, a sort of band-aid to be able to do something while we're teaching remotely, but also to create meaningful resources that we can use well beyond um, our current situation. And so in order to do that, instructors need more training to effectively use these tools, but they also need a more ready to use resources because it's great that I know now how to use a Quizlet or Wakelet or uh, Padlet or Google Forms, but we don't all necessarily have time to be creating every single thing that we want to be teaching or using. And so, um, we wanted through the EdTech Makerspace to create a sort of way for which teachers can be creating things um, that can be more widely used. Now a challenge with that is consistency. Um, and so traditionally we, we tend to rely on things like publisher resources because of the fact that there's comprehensive coverage with those resources and there's consistent format. Lessons have a consistent structure. Um, there might be an introduction and examples and then some instruction and then guided practice for students. And so we know when we pick up any lesson within say a book or even any lesson within an online um, platform that we may be using, what the structure of the lesson is going to be. So that, that provides us with a little bit of trust um, as well as an ease with which we can assign and be sure that we know what students are going to be doing as part of those lessons. Um, and on the flip side of that, you know, we, we know that there's a need for free resources. Many of us sort of out of the gate started getting free access to all sorts of great online resources that typically have a licensing fee. Um, but those sort of freebies have run out. And so we all know that adult ed providers often don't have a ton of um, extra money to spend on some of these tools. And so how do we maybe provide some of these remote learning tools and mobile friendly tools, but do it on a budget, but also do it in a way that it's easy for us to be able to take it and use it like we would a publisher resource. And the challenge for, for many of the online resources that are available that are free is many of these lessons, which may be excellent lessons, are all designed differently. So uh, on the right is an example of three resources related to fractions and decimals. 
from uh, OER Commons, which is an open education resource repository that has tons of great lessons. But you'll see there's three different providers. I happen to know the first one, Connie Rivera. She runs the Adult Numeracy Network. So I have no doubt that this is an excellent math lesson, but I'm gonna have to click a few times to download this lesson, it's a lesson plan. I'm gonna have to read through the lesson plan to understand what is sort of the style in which this lesson is being delivered? What are the resources that I'm going to need to bring in order for my students to do this resource? And then here's like two others. Both of these are actually from a publisher who's decided to, to post some openly licensed lessons too. But knowing that, that, that all of these different lessons is designed differently, um, it's not going to be sort of plug and play, makes it a challenge for me to spend a lot of time sifting through resources on something like OER Commons. Um, and so teachers need to read through all of these things in order to get it. And so, um, you know, all of these things are questions. What is the delivery method? What is the format that I'd be delivering these lessons and what are the materials that I need? And so the EdTech Makerspace is, is sort of designed to address both that need and the challenge that was just presented. And so the way that we do this is teachers learn new educational technology tools. So they learn how to use these tools effectively so that they can be creating resources for their students. In many cases, other teachers have created Quizlets. Other teachers have created Wakelets that you could search and find ones that you could readily share with your students without having to create something from scratch. So teachers get training on how to use those tools both to find resources that might be relevant to their learners as well as to create resources that are relevant to their learners. And as part of that process, teachers are not just learning how to use those ed tech tools, but they're actually creating resources uh, in a way with a sort of mind's eye towards this is not just a, a, an activity for me to use with my students, so I'm bringing in all of these things that only I do with my students that might not make sense to another teacher, but designing them in a consistent manner so that I can easily use this with teachers and any other teacher that finds this resource um, can readily take it and either share it with students as is or can make a copy of it and customize it to suit sort of the way that they um, want to integrate that resource. And so in terms of developing the EdTech Makerspace that we just ran um, this summer, the first thing we did was a needs analysis. And this might be a sort of set of questions that you use if based on what you see here today, this is something that you want to try with your organization and with your teachers. And the first thing is, where do we need more resources? Um, and in this case, we know that there is, there's always been a need for more readings that are relevant to adult learners at early literacy levels. I worked in the publishing field for 15 years, eight of which was in adult ed. And when we were at conferences, we would always get asked, we need more leveled readers. We need more readings that are out there um, that are not for children who have a third grade reading level, but are for adults. Um, and so that was sort of the need that we worked to tackle. And then it comes down to actually finding, are there resources out there that are available? Um, and so those sort of two questions, yes, there might be resources that are available. And so if there are, is that resource openly licensed? Um, meaning that I have the ability to take it and easily share it with my students. And within that, how easy is it for me to take that and share it with my students? Do I need to do a lot of reconfiguration? Um, in order to make this actually usable for myself or for my students. Um, and then if there's not resources out there, then the question is, can you afford to pay for something that's out there? Or how easily could it be created by uh, your instructors? So the example that I just gave uh, was you know, Google Forms quizzes. So would it be reasonable to have your instructors um, take different skills that you know that your learners need in math or in language and develop maybe um, Google Forms quizzes that help uh, them to practice and, and demonstrate their understanding of, of lessons or different skills that they need to learn. Uh, one of the um, folks who participated in this uh, cohort of the EdTech Makerspace I know is going to be thinking about designing activities for English learners. 
um, and using things like Google Slides where they can create drag and drop, um, you know, word, word walls that students could um, drag and drop those into sentences. Uh, and I don't know if that's the nature of the activity. So for the person who's doing that, sorry if I'm mischaracterizing it, but you know, a very simple activity type that could be taking a, a simple thing like a Google slide uh, with words on it and, and creating prompts and directions for students to take those words and organize them into either categories or organize them into sentences. Um, so if we decide that this is, that's a format of an activity that really would be engaging for learners, that would help them develop digital literacy skills, can we train all our teachers on creating those uh, and then give them sort of a set of tasks that they can go forth and create so that again, um, you know, we have many teachers focused on creating similar types of activities so that the end result is, is a range of resources that are all created consistently and um, it's, you know, we are all stronger together. The second, or the third thing, excuse me, is within both of these things, what tools can we leverage to make that learning resource more accessible to our students, more usable both to students and to instructors? And so, um, you know, this comes down to, uh, there, there may be a resource that's out there in the case of what we're going to walk through now, what we did with this cohort was a resource that is online already. There's readings that are online. There are supplements that go with those readings, but those readings, those supplements, excuse me, are downloadable Word docs. And so while in our classroom setting, that might be easy for teachers to download, print, and share with students, if you have zero contact with students right now, and maybe their only access to learning is mobile, uh, that supplement, uh, while has, it has excellent content, is challenging for us to, cons to consider like learners actually using it right now in our current situation. So how could we maybe take the activities that are on that supplement that go with the readings and make them more usable to learners right now who currently have access issues because of the fact that they're working remotely and because of the fact that in many cases they're only online access uh, maybe from uh, a mobile device. And so uh, in walking through those questions, the uh, project that we designed for the summer cohort was developing a leveled reading library for early literacy levels. And the content that we found for that was a resource called Reading Skills for Today's Adults. And I'm going to hop out of my um, presentation here for a second and go to that website. Now, reading skills for today's adults, and I would love for folks uh, in the chat to say whether or not you're familiar with reading skills for today's adults, if you've used it in the past. But reading skills for today's adults, so just say yes if you've used reading skills uh, for today's adults in the past or heard of it. This is a leveled library that's been around for a number of years. It was developed, uh, you may know it as Marshall Adult Education because it was actually developed by an adult ed program in um, Southwest Minnesota, in Marshall, Minnesota. And it was designed to uh, help uh, adult learners who I think in the, his the, 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 uh, the, the folklore of it, if I'm not mistaken, is there was a, a turkey processing plant that closed down, I believe, and there were a number of unemployed uh, workers suddenly that had really low literacy skills. And so they went through um, to develop a leveled reading library called Reading Skills for Today's Adults. Now, it's been around for years, and I'm actually, if you look in here, um, and this is actually in the Wakelet, this is the updated version of the, what was the Marshall Adult Education or Reading Skills for Today's Adults. And so this is a leveled library. You'll see there's 16 levels in it. Um, within each of those levels, there are a number of stories, and I'm not going to click on any of them right now. Uh, we will in a second. I'll actually open one up just because um, it'll be helpful for, actually, I'll do it right now because this makes sense. So here is the sort of the scenario that we approached this cohort with. We knew that this existed. We knew that these stories were here. We knew that um, there were great readings, uh, audio recordings of the reading that helped um, learners build their fluency, which is what the website was designed to focus on. Uh, each of these readings is uh, focusing on different things. The first one is sort of word by word decoding and being able to you know, read and recognize words. The second one focuses more on chunking and appropriate pauses. And then the third 
recording focuses on full intonation, fluency, and prosody. And there's a timer for learners to uh, time themselves. And you'll see here there's word counts for each line so they can actually be testing and checking what their words per minute is in terms of reading. So that all exists and that all is very easy. Uh, it's not easy, excuse me, but that is also, are all things that learners can do on their mobile device. But as part of this update, um, Southwest Minnesota Adult Basic Education built these great supplements, which I'm gonna download here and you're gonna see uh, for a second, a peek of my horribly, um, doo -doo. actually, let me just open it this way. Show and Finder. All my windows are always in the way. So I'm gonna open that up. They created this Word document uh, supplement that can be downloaded and provides all sorts of great activities for students to do beyond the reading. So things like vocabulary activities and grammar activities and comprehension activities. So there's vocabulary words and then a closed paragraph activity, a fill in the blank activity and then a language activity uh, focusing on um, use the simple present tense, and then there are speaking comprehension activities, and then multiple choice assessment activities, and then writing activities. And at the lower levels for the writing and for the speaking, you'll see it provides these sort of starter sentences for students to frame what they're going to say as they respond to the questions, or to write what they uh, are going to write in response to the writing options that are there. So this is all excellent stuff. And I encourage folks to check out the site because regardless of your scenario, um, even if you are still working remotely, if you're doing things like sending packets to students, these are definitely things that you could be downloading um, and sharing with students. So, that was the sort of the nature of the resource uh, that we knew that we wanted to work with. And so um, as this is the walkthrough of everything I just did, we knew all of these things existed. So then the question is, how can we take some of these things and design activities that are mobile friendly for students? And what ed tech tools would we use in order to do that? And so what we first did was look at the vocabulary sets that come with each reading and thought that we could build Quizlets, which is a very easy to use uh, study set tool that you can create flashcards and more using um, that can be shared with students. And so uh, teachers first had training in Quizlet and how to design these study sets. And so they created study sets that use the vocabulary words from the reading skills from today's adults library. Uh, then the second thing that we thought about was the comprehension quizzes. And uh, at the end of each one of the supplements is we see that there's a multiple choice uh, assessment. And so, whoops, I accidentally had a hyperlink in there, my fault. I'm gonna close out some things here because all these windows are in my way. And so we decided to use Google Forms to take those otherwise not unusable, but um, obviously sort of paper pencil, um, uh, quizzes that are with each of the stories and put them into a shareable mobile friendly format so that students can answer these questions using Google Forms. And I, here we go. And then the third tool that we uh, trained teachers in was Wakelet. And so Wakelet is a tool that allows you to create collections. So rather than having a Quizlet over here on some page and then the stories on the Reading Skills for Today's Adult site and then the Google Forms quizzes somewhere else, we pulled all those things together in a wakelet so that teachers could share a wakelet with students. And it has the vocabulary practice, it has the reading passage, and it has the reading comprehension quiz all in one place. And as we're gonna talk about later, since all of these tools are customizable, you will have the ability, since these teachers have created these resources, to either share them as is, or to make copies of them into your own libraries of these tools so that you can adjust as you see fit um, and rearrange, take out content, add content, and use these uh, in any number of ways that fits your setting and your students. And so the way that we ran this project, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through this relatively quickly because I wanna actually get into all of the great resources that were created by the teachers. Um, 
So the way that this ran is each teacher basically uh, went through tech tool trainings on each of these three tools. So we, we would do webinars, there were about 90 minutes, usually they went a little bit longer, but that walk through the how to's of how to use these tools, how to create with them, how to find resources that might already be existing um, using them, but then dived into we have a task. We want to create those vocabulary cards from the stories using Quizlet. We want to create Google Forms quizzes that use the comprehension quiz, quiz, uh, questions excuse me, using Google Forms. And so we channeled everyone with, now that you know sort of the how-tos, we're going to take that and we're going to create very consistent quizzes and very uh, consistent vocabulary study sets using the content from the reading skills for today's adults supplement. And uh, we had 44 teachers that participated um, over, overall that, that created at least one resource. A majority actually made it all the way to the end, which uh, I just have to say, when you look at the calendar dates for this project, uh, this was in the midst of people maybe trying to salvage summer, for one, um, and or trying to sort of get ready for the new school year. Uh, knowing that that everything was going to be remote and so there was tons of sort of a flurry of activity for everyone to actually get ready for the school year and still I'm just amazed at the perseverance of the teachers who were part of this training. So the way that we ran this and this is more info for if you're thinking about this being something that you want to do is we started out with doing the tech tool training. So we would do two trainings and again we had 44 teachers um, so we divided it into two trainings uh, so that people could make the training that fit their schedule and then followed that up the next week with open office hours for teachers to drop in if they had questions or specific questions on how to create their resources or how to find things. And so we did these in two week sprints for Quizlet, for Google Forms, and then for Wakelet over the course of six weeks. And everything was organized using Google Classroom. So once teachers did the training, um, they got an assignment in Google Classroom. So in this case, it was creating the Wakelets. And so there were instructions that helped them see what resources that they have available to go through the process of creating their Wakelets. Uh, as with Google Classroom, if you're familiar with it, then once they were done, they could click Mark as done and submit it so that that triggered awareness that these resources were completed. But for each of the assignments, we provided a number of um, resources to help teachers. So one were the slides, much like the slides that we're looking at today. We developed guides uh, and checklists to help them know what they were supposed to do and then a checklist for them to track to make sure that they did everything that was uh, needed for the resource to be final. Um, this, uh, we provided the video of the training so that they had access to that to resource every time. There was a tracking sheet where inst uh, instructors were going to, to share and the links to the resources that they created. And so that was this massive spreadsheet that basically resulted in over a thousand different links to different resources created by the educators. Um, in this case, we had sort of additional um, tools, but if you're familiar with Google Classroom, with the assignment, we basically bundled all of the things that they needed in order to complete the assignment. Um, and the assignment being creating the resources that they were gonna create using the tool. Um, and so these were the guides that we provided. And again, this is more for you if you're thinking of maybe doing something like this. Uh, the guides provided an overview of the tool itself and how you might use it, and then specific instructions on how to create, in this case, their wakelet. Um, and then also we embedded visual instructions that supported the instructors to see uh, exactly what they would be doing for each of these steps. Um, and so now I'm excited to share the results because you may or may not have heard of the EdTech Makerspace and what we're doing. I've been trying as much as I can to sort of share out our progress. And um, now I'm excited to share the results. And if you are in the Wakelet, you may have already peeked around to see some of the things that we're doing. Now, uh, first of all, the results to me, because this is one of the reasons why we did this, was to provide teacher professional development. Um, I, based on the feedback, I think everyone really, really enjoyed 
this experience. Um, because it wasn't just learning how to do something and then going back to sort of reality and then not having immediate opportunities to actually take it and do something with it. Um, so here's two examples of feedback that we got. Um, I, I really like the one on the left. I will say we had 44 teachers, as I've said before, um, ranging from all sorts of levels of ability. So there were definitely teachers that came in that already knew how to use Google Forms or Wakelet or Quizlet. And maybe for those tools or maybe even all the tools, they just wanted the experience of being able to uh, create resources that others could use. Um, but we also, on this comment on the left, had folks that really did not feel confident um, with EdTech tools. And so I was beyond impressed with the perseverance of a number of the participants who clearly had not used some of these tools um, or were unfamiliar with them at best and uh, really just persevered and, and went through and developed as a result of the project. Everyone had to create five Quizlets, five Google Forms, and five Wakelets. Um, and so the comment on the right is just from another teacher that you know was looking at this from the standpoint of yeah this was time spent but now i have all of these resources that i can readily use with my students and more than the ones that i created because there were 44 other 43 other teachers participating but i also developed skills in how to use these tools and this was uh sort of the time commitment so uh, in terms of this project across the six weeks, we had about 70% um, that said that this was eight to more hours. So I would say it was probably about eight to 10 and more um, hours to basically both do the trainings and create the resources over the course of six weeks. Uh, in terms of the time commitment, I think overall people felt pretty comfortable with it, which again, I'm somewhat astounded by because of all that is going on in everyone's, not just professional lives, but personal lives at this moment. Um, so I really am thankful to the teachers who uh, participated in this. And so the resources that were developed um, have been organized in a number of different ways uh, for you to basically um, use as you see fit based again on your uh, setting and context um, with your learners. So I just want to hop into the Wakelet really quickly because um, that does have everything. Uh, so some full disclosure, uh, while the resources themselves have been done, um, we are still in the review process. We had four teachers who uh, were able to do some extra work. It was funded through a Creative Commons grant um, to serve as reviewers. They've done their part. I now need to do my part uh, to finish up some of these pieces, but uh, there are, uh, all of the resources are still available to you and you're gonna see the format that those are, but there are some caveats to it. But I'm gonna hop into the Wakelet um, real quickly. And I see that, uh, Tiffany, you have a couple of people have raised your hands. Um, go ahead and use the chat uh, if you have a question. Well, there's been a few hand raises. Um, do, do. I'm just stopping for questions right now. Um, there was one question on the supplement, I believe. Can students fill in the answers online to be graded? Those are Word docs, so um, they would have to just do it in the Word doc and share it with you, or you could convert the supplement to a Google doc, and then you could assign it through Google Classroom if you're using that, and then, you know, in that case, you could create an assignment to do the reading, you could share the supplement as part of the assignment, every student would get their own version of it, and then you could instruct them on the things that you want them to complete. The nice thing about the reading skills for today's adults resources, I'm gonna go back to that, I don't know if I still have it open, um, is because it's a Word doc, you have the ability to cut out whatever you want um, and just assign the things that you want. But they would be filling in these answers um, in whatever way makes sense for your students on the Word document. So there's opportunities for digital literacy skill development there. Um, but you would have to uh, figure out how you want to do that with students. 
So in terms of, and again, if you have any questions, uh, please do use the chat. Um, students do not use email, need email addresses to use any of uh, the wakelets. They will need an email address for the library right now. Um, uh, the app, excuse me, which we'll get into in a second, and that is because that's the only way that they can actually track their work. But once we have all the content finalized, I'm gonna give multiple options for that because I know that might be an issue for some folks. But on the Wakelet, um, you have access to a number of things. And this is the Wakelet that was shared. So let me share this Wakelet with you again. Uh, students do not need to have Wakelet downloaded on their phone, but it does make the experience better for them um, if, if you want to use that. So the slides are in here. Uh, and then there's really three ways, and I'm going to walk through these, that students can be accessing uh, and you can be accessing the content. One is uh, the uh, website, and this is on the Crowded Learning site, which is called Marshall Reading Program. And that is something that um, we worked with Southwest Minnesota Adult Basic Education to uh, get a sense of how we want to use this. So Reading Skills for Today's Adults is their own website, but there's also an app that is available for a cost um, through um, do, 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 family learning, family, I'll, Christine, if you want to chat, the, the, the company that offers the, um, the app uh, for Reading Skills for Today's Adults. So we didn't want to create confusion. Um, so there's a Families Learning Together app that if you go to the Reading Skills for Today's Adults site, you can learn more about. Um, and there's the link that Christine um, posted in, or C posted in there, thank you. Um, we have created another app that's utilizing the mobile-friendly resources that the teachers created, and you're gonna see what that looks like in a second. Um, we have a website that has individual wakelets for all of the readings. And then we also have a spreadsheet that has the links for every single Quizlet, every single Google form, and every single wakelet that, okay, it's called Family Learning Company. <laughs> Family, <laughs> sorry, uh, is the app that um, Reading Skills for Today's Adults has. Um, so we've taken the content that the teachers have created, and this is going to be a work in progress based on feedback that we get from users. Um, but all of the wakelets are available for you to share as is. Uh, we have an app that you can use with your learners and share it with your learners that has all of the resources embedded into it. And then we also have a spreadsheet that you can view and make a copy if you want. I would advise against that right now because we're still making some updates to the content and you won't get those updates if you download it. But that allows you to take, uh, to just quickly find any of the specific resources, the Quizlets, the Wakelets, um, or the Google Forms and copy those and share those individual things directly with learners if you want to do that. Um, and we also have this link to the original reading skills for today's adults. So I'm gonna hop into um, the first sort of set of resources, and this is on our Crowded Learning website. So you're, some folks are jumping ahead, and I see that, but we'll, we'll get to all of these things as we go. So I'm gonna paste into um, the chat the direct link to the leveled reading program on the Crowded Learning site. And this is ultimately going to be the home for everything. Um, but we're, we, I, I need to figure out how we're gonna separate out the teacher resources so that students don't have access to that. I'm also in the process of figuring out how we migrate the crowded learning site over into world education. Um, so bear with us if this changes over time, but I promise you this link um, will, will stay the same. Um, and so, and if not, we'll have a redirect uh, to the correct place for it. But for now, where we have housed everything is on this page. This page is also in the wakelet that you have access to. And all of the stories are divided into uh, four levels. And so there's level A, B, C, D, and this aligns to college and career readiness standards. Now on our website, you'll also see the corresponding table level, the corresponding lexile range of the stories within that level, as well as the corresponding ATOS readability scales 
um, for the stories in those levels. And a number of these things are also available on the reading skills for today's adults site. So this is like one sort of shift. The thinking here is there are 16 levels and these gradually uh, sort of uh, progress in terms of readability skills. Um, but you know, knowing that folks obviously are following the standards or following the tests that you may be using with students such as Tabor Casas, we decided to sort of group all of those stories within those levels into these uh, four levels. So it's A, B, C, and D. So I'm gonna click on one of these just so you see where this launches you into. So this is gonna launch you into a Wakelet space. So spaces is something that Wakelet allows you to organize a bunch of Wakelets that you've created into one place. So all of the level B stories, um, which again corresponds to table level E, are located here. And you're gonna see there's a range of things. These stories range from concepts like money to parenting. Um, you'll see that we pulled from a, a library that you might see some repeat images, and we'll change that to safety and health to this is one that's based on work, this is based on health, um, entertainment, all sorts of different categories, citizenship, and um, again, work. So you can scroll through and find these. Now, if you click on any of these, we'll go to citizenship. Uh, I need to, th if, if anyone knows the CASAS corresponding levels, I would love to add it. That's a question that popped in there. Um, I'm not sure. I know it's, E is, uh, is, uh, is adult secondary. So everything below, but I know that they group things a little differently. So I think multiple levels like A and B might be like one CASAS level. Um, I, I need to find that. And I'm sorry that's not ready um, in time for today, but that will be added. So what the Wakelet looks like, as uh, we were talking about, is it is a collection of the resources that go along with the story. So on a computer, I have the ability to click on the vocabulary practice, and it's going to launch the Quizlet for me to do vocabulary practice. If I click on the reading selection, it's going to open the reading selection from the reading skills for today's adults. Uh, library, thank you to the Southwest Minnesota AB folks to, for sharing out these things. Um, so this is the actual reading, and again, uh, while I'm on a computer right now, this is mobile friendly, uh, so students can read the story, students can access uh, the timer on their mobile phone and the reading recordings so that they can work on fluency within that. And then we have the comprehension check here, and that comprehension check is using Google Forms. And so students can uh, basically uh, answer questions after doing the reading to check their understanding. Now, in this case, this Google Form is in Crowded Learning's Google Drive. And so Google, our Google Drive uh, is going to get the results and we're, those aren't necessarily things that are gonna be shared. Um, it's sort of just going into nowhere. We're not checking or monitoring those, it's just we have the form created. Within the resources uh, that you're being provided, and that I'll show you in a second, you have the ability to, create, to grab a copy of this Google Form and to add it to your drive so that you could assign directly to your students and then you would actually be getting the results of students' comprehension questions for the stories that you share with your students. Now, one of the things in terms of usability that we thought about was this is a Google Form. Now, once you make a copy of it, maybe you don't want to use Wakelet. Um, maybe you don't feel that it's necessary for students to practice vocabulary. Um, maybe you just want students to be reading and checking their understanding. Um, you could make a copy of this and just assign the Google Form because the way that we structured the format, and this is in that design sort of thinking, the way we designed this was that the story link is right here. So you could assign and share with your students this Google form, and then here is the link to that story. They can click that, they can open the story. So we were just back here a second ago, but we launched it from the Wakelet. They can read the story, and then when they're ready, then they can go forth and answer the questions to demonstrate their understanding. And so there's, again, we're looking at many different ways of using the same resource 
and being able to share that with students. In terms of the resources themselves, um, I've pointed out what's on the reading itself with those recordings. I think you all know what a Google Forms quiz looks like. Um, one of the things with the Quizlets that I think is interesting is one, these are very mobile friendly. They're very uh, user uh, friendly in terms of accessibility. They're very operable to students, but these allow students to you know, basically practice these words. On the phone, it's a really sort of nice experience. They can, um, when they have the flashcards, they can swipe right uh, if they have a Quizlet account, if they have the app uh, and it'll open up in the app for them. If they swipe right, they're just basically tracking that they know this word. If they swipe left, it's telling it that I want to see this word again because I, I don't quite know it. And so they can go through these practice activities as many times as they want. There's uh, multiple choice uh, activities within that they can practice to see if they've uh, learned the words. Um, it'll track that. There's also games. Um, on, the, on a mobile device, they do not have Gravity, but Gravity actually is a cool one that allows you to practice uh, typing as you are doing it. So I want to answer with the term, not the definition. But uh, this is a game-based uh, version where once they've actually had familiarity with it, um, I have not practiced these words, so I don't know, but they have to type in the word in order to prevent the asteroid from hitting the planet. I'm going to fail, the world is going to end, sorry. Um, but on the mobile device, they can play the matching game. And this is kind of fun because anyone who accesses this Quizlet is also playing this. And so here they drag and drop the word to the definition and you'll see there's a timer. On the app, it's just a grid and they tap the word and tap the definition and then those disappear. And so there's a leaderboard for the matching activities. So there's engaging vocabulary activities that students can do and they're part of the global community. So anyone who's accessing um, this and plays the matching game, it's actually going to have their scores. And so there's other ways that, that students can be engaging um, with these Quizlets. So that's just a quick caveat on the Quizlet. Somebody asked, how do you assign the readings to students? We're, we're gonna get into that in a second. That's a great question. So, but first, I wanna move on to the second um, resource that's available to you. And that is, um, actually, let's get into that now. So what, while we have a Wakelet open, um, Uh, you have the ability to copy these to your Wakelet account if you choose to create a Wakelet account, or even if you don't, you have the ability to share these with students. Um, and so you would simply click on share. And if I click on share, and these same tools are available in Quizlet. So if you just wanted to assign the Quizlet, you could do that. Um, but you can assign just by copying the link and sharing it with students via however you communicate with them. Uh, there is a direct integration with Remind. So if you use Remind as a communication tool, it can be assigned through that. If you want to assign it through Google Classroom, there is a Google Classroom link that allows you to click on this and it's going to launch your Google Classroom and then you can create the assignment there for students. So if I did that right now with this as is, remember, uh, this is a quiz or Wakelet that uh, has the generic comprehension quiz in it. So you wouldn't be seeing the result of the assessments. Uh, if you wanted to see those results, you would have to switch out the assessment with the one that's been provided. So before we end today, I definitely wanna show you how to do that because I think that's gonna be very helpful to a lot of folks. Um, so that's how you would share the wakelets. The second resource that we have created by way of what these educators have created is a mobile app. And I'm gonna share that with you now uh, in the chat. And I'm actually going to click on that myself. Uh, this is use, created using a tool called Glide. Um, and basically when students use this, they are going to have to provide their email address if they have one for now. Um, once all of the resources are finalized and I know they're solid, we will actually run two versions of this. One that does not require email, one that does. Um, the reason for requiring the email is solely so that the student can actually track for themselves the readings that they've finished. 
So I'm going to um, enter in my email address here, just so you can see the pro, actually I'm gonna use a different email address, so you can see the process. And I'm gonna click continue. And it's going to email me a pin. So Glide doesn't actually really manage accounts. And I have, because I'm super big on security, I reached out to them when we did a different app for GED math prep using Glide to make sure that there was nothing being captured or shared of student data. And so I was given assurance on that. Um, so I have now sent a, um, Let's see, and of course it's probably not gonna send it, like here we go. Okay, so here I got my email um, and I have my pin. And so now I'm going to enter in my pin. Actually, I can remember this, I'm, I'm, I think I have a good enough memory, 00991. So I'm gonna enter the pin. Obviously I'm doing this on a desktop, 00991. But one of the cool things about this app creator is if I access this on here, or if I access this on a computer, uh, on a mobile device, um, it's going to track everything. And there's actually a desktop version of this that you can uh, download that would allow students to access it um, on, a, on a computer, um, but then it's also mobile friendly. So with the app, what we've done is something a little different. This is meant to be more just user facing. Um, one of the missions of Crowded Learning is to take the resources that we know students have access to when they are in a formal learning environment and to make sure that they continue to retain access when they leave that formal education environment, which we know is often. And so what we've done with this app is it's free and it's organized by topics. So in addition to just having the levels of the stories, we've categorized them, the teachers went in and gave them uh, categorizations based on topics. And so students have the ability, if they know their levels, to go in and to um, click on a topic of interest. And then they're going to see all of the stories uh, that fit into this topic, which is money. And they're organized by levels. So all the student needs to know is what level they should be working in and they can see all of the stories that exist at their level. Um, for uh, this topic. So we're in money, uh, we're going to go into um, pay yourself first. So this is about money management and saving. So it looks similar to the Wakelet uh, in terms of it's got an image, it's got the title, and then it's got all of the things that are accessed. And now I'm again, I'm on a computer, but if I click on any of these things, it's going to open up those uh, into another screen. If I do it on my computer here, it's gonna launch another tab, so I'm not going to do it. So it has all of the things that were created by the, by the educators who participated. So you have the Quizlet, and if the students have the Quizlet app, it's gonna launch that Quizlet app. Um, it's gonna launch the website if they have the story, so that would bounce them into another tab. But what's nice is there's a close button on top of the tab. Again, I can't demonstrate that because I'm on a computer right now. And then the Google Form, which as many of you know, are very mobile friendly. And again, that would open up, but there'd be a done, a done button up top and it would bring them back here. Um, what's great about this is that it, we have story details for each of the stories. So it says what other topics this might relate to. It says the readability level. And then the student has the ability to indicate if they've completed it, they can also add a note in here and say like, I really like this. Um, just for their sort of own ability to maybe just jot down what they learned. This is completely for the learner. This is not necessarily designed for you to be tracking students' work, um, but you, you, there are ways that you could ask students to share um, what they've done with this. Um, so now if I go back to the page before, you're gonna see that this story is checked off, so the student sees that this is a story that I've already done. Um, they have a tab here, that shows all of the stories that they've completed. And then they can also explore if they don't want to um, do that, uh, they can explore by level. So in this case, uh, they can click on say level B, which is tab level um, E, and they can just see all of the stories that exist. Now that story uh, was at tab level B, so here it is. 
Um, these are organized in, and, and categorized, excuse me, by the reading skills for today's adults uh, levels. Now, there's a handful of things that I need to do with this app. Um, we're gonna have more information that's going to link students to the reading skills for today's adults main library. Um, I think it's interesting this question about a placement component. Uh, I think that would be something that would be interesting. I don't know if we could build it into the app. Um, but one thing to note, just if you go ahead and download this app, uh, you're going to see that sometimes there is not an image. That is because uh, this is a total Jeff task. Um, I am going through and, and grabbing all of the images that teachers selected and embedded into their wakelets. And then I'm adding them into a separate spreadsheet so that they will be populated into here. So uh, for some of the stories, there is an image. For some of the stories, there is not. But over the course of the next couple of weeks, those will be finished up. Um, in terms of uh, following up to see things as they're updated, the, uh, any updates to the content, it's going to update in real time live on the app. Um, and the, our Marshall, this page on the Crowded Learning website is always going to be updating as well. Again, I need to think about the best way to provide the spreadsheet to teachers because that, there's no real giveaways, but if the student is savvy enough, uh, they would be able to copy the Google Form links and find the answers to those stories. So I'm just trying to figure out the best way to get that. I don't, what I don't want to do is have to have any of these things behind a lockdown where teachers have to sign up or submit something in order to get access to that spreadsheet. Um, so, and part of that sort of dilemma is my website is going to be migrating, so <laughs> we'll figure that out. But I will do the best I can by way of you being in this webinar um, and having signed up, I will make sure that all of any updates are communicated to you over the next few weeks and months. Um, so just know that that will be happening. Um, then the third thing is the spreadsheet. And so the spreadsheet is, again, in the wakelet that's been provided to you. And I'm just going to open that up right now. And I'm just going to share one quick example of how you could customize your wakelets using the spreadsheet. But just so you uh, know, this has all of the stories. Uh, if you see yellow in here, that means that it's a Google form that I wouldn't touch right now because there might need to be some tweaks. In many cases, it might be that like the, the items aren't weighted or the item is not required and we want to make sure that those are fixed. Um, but anything that's not highlighted should be good to go. Obviously, you're an educator and, and make sure to check. And then obviously, a number of these wakelets are blank. That means it's just not done. In many cases it is done, but I need to copy it over into the Crowded Learning account because that's where we're organizing everything. Um, but what you'll see here is all of the stories. You'll see the reading skills for today's adults level. You'll see the readability scales, the TAB level, the CCRS level. If I can figure it out and I know there's been chatter on CASAS, uh, the CASAS levels will be added. Uh, all of these links will open these things up directly. So um, you can go to the Wakelet or you can go here. And then just like Wakelet, um, with Quizlet, uh, these could be shared directly with your students using a number of the same tools that you might use. So you could copy the link and share it with students. You could assign just the Quizlet with Google Classroom. Uh, you could share it on Remind. They also have Microsoft Teams, as do the Wakelets. Um, if you have Quizlet, you can also add this to your own um, account or you can, you can edit it here. Um, you wouldn't have this edit button because this is my Quizlet, um, but you would have this add a button which would allow you to add your own copy of this to your Quizlet account. So if for some reason you wanted to customize it in some way, you would be able to, to do that. So all of these resources, you have direct links to them. Uh, the Google Forms, we have the link to the generic one, which is already in the Wakelet, which you may or may not want to assign, but again, you would not get the results. Um, but we also have a copy URL, and I have to give a big shout out. I know she's on this webinar, Mary Gaston, uh, who is the one that she taught me that you can create a copy link. This is one of the things that teachers learned. Um, of any way, uh, any uh, Google form that allows you to grab a copy of it and put it into your drive. 
So I am now gonna show you how you would do that with uh, Google Forms so that you would get your learner results of um, story. Uh, and you could either share the form as is with your students or you could add it to the wakelets that have already been created. So with any of those links you saw, I just clicked this, it's going to immediately prompt you to make a copy of that into your own drive. So what's going to now happen is I am going to make a copy of it. So now this is a copy of that quiz that lives in my drive. And so I will get student responses from this when they respond. So I could send this to students as is. Obviously, you'd want to organize it how you might see fit. Um, I, I could email it directly to students. I could share this with students. Um, I could even embed it on my web page. But I'm going to just, I'm going to actually copy this share link um, so that this would be for me to send to students so that they could take the quiz. So this is Joe's work day. So now I'm going to go to the Wakelet library. And I happen to know that um, this Joe's work day is in level A. And I could also just access that story directly. I guess I could have done this from here. So here, I'm going to open the Wakelet from here, um, just for ease and time's sake. So now here is that Wakelet. And I just copied the link to my version of the Google Form. So we have a Wakelet that is in the Crowded Learning Library. And you, as a teacher, you want to get a copy of this Wakelet so that you can take your Google quiz and put it into this Wakelet. So all you have to do is create copy or click copy here. Um, and it's going to make a copy of this into your library. So I'm to your Wakelet library. So now you do need a Wakelet account if you want to do this. So this has been copied successfully. I'm gonna go back to my home and I'm going to see, uh, just cause I'm in spaces, it's giving me some trouble here. Hold on one second. And sorry, I'm going a little over, not shocked. So now this is a copy of that Joe's Workday. So all I would need to do is go into Joe's Workday, the story here, and right now it has this comprehension check, and that is the comprehension check that goes to Crowded Learning's account. We don't want that. We want to get rid of that, and we want to paste in the Google Form that I just copied. So I can go to edit the collection, because now it's my version of the collection on my Wakelet account, and I'm going to click on this comprehension check, I'm just going to delete it, and in its place, I'm going to paste the link to my version. And here is my version of the Joe's Workday quiz in this Wakelet, and all I have to do now is save this, and I can save this. And so now I have a collection that includes the original vocabulary practice that has the link to the story, and then as my version of the Google Forms quiz, and I can share that with students. Uh, uh, within Wakelet, you have to make things private or uh, public, so I can change this to be unlisted and maybe only the people I share it with get it, or public, I'm gonna make it public. Um, and so now I can share this via Google Classroom in all of the ways that we uh, just talked about. All of the forms, uh, this is a question, this is a great uh, question. So all the Google Forms um, are set so that if a student went into the generic one, the original one that was here, they would immediately, uh, after they finish it, they can see their results. Um, so yes, and the default on all of them, uh, even if you were to copy it as is and integrate it, would be for them to see the results in terms of how you performed. So the walkthrough that I just did, however, allows you to switch it out and then you would actually be seeing those results of your students. All right, so uh, given that we're well over, I've already walked through some of these things. But uh, again, in thinking about um, how we design these to make them really usable as opposed to rigid, um, you know, all of these tools have similar ways of being able to share with students and being able to copy them. So you all have the ability to copy these Quizlets and make them your own. You all have the ability to copy these Wakelets and make them your own. Maybe that Joe's Workday, which is about getting to work on time, 
um, that's the sort of notion of the story, you want to add in a video um, that is about workplace skills and talks about, you know, maybe it's a video of a, of a worker not getting to work on time or not showing up to an interview on time. So you have the ability to add anything or take out anything you want within those wakelets. Um, but all of these tools have the same affordances. And so this makes them very easy for you to customize as you see fit. And again, as I've walked through with both of these tools, um, they all are very shareable and they're shareable via things that you might already be using like Google Classroom or like Remind. Um, so in terms of strategies for integrating the content, uh, I think we've already walked through all of those things. You can share them as is directly with learners, yay. And maybe you're just having students screen cap their results and send that to you. Um, you can directly assign individual resources or wakelets through um, the tools that you might be using to share content with students. And then you can co copy and customize all of these things to suit your learners' needs, including copying the Google form so that you can actually get the results for your learners. Um, in terms of what is next, um, as I've gone through this, I think one of the things that I will definitely um, plop onto the website is, and maybe even on the spreadsheet, is a how-to video uh, walking through what I just did uh, in terms of taking a copy of the quiz and putting it into a wakelet so that teachers have guidance on that. Um, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. That, I think, might be a good thing for folks to have for those of you who might not be familiar with Wakelet um, and with Google Forms. But we are going to be developing a project toolkit for the EdTech Makerspace, so providing a sort of guide for educators in case you decide that you want to get up and running and train teachers and creating different tools um, that could be usable for your students in a similar manner to what we did. Uh, within that, we're also going to include guidance around Creative Commons licensing um, because that is uh, important when we're thinking about taking other people's content and sharing it in different ways and modifying it. And so we want to make sure that folks are aware of the do's and don'ts around Creative Commons licensing and open education resources. And then some tips for actually running a successful ed tech makerspace. I think more or less this project went very successfully. There's a number of things that I would do differently. Um, I've reached out to some of the folks who have participated to get their feedback so that we can put that in. Um, and then we are going to be running another EdTech Makerspace cohort. Again, since I am now part of World Education, there's just some things that I need to walk through with them in terms of how we're going to manage that. Um, but uh, look for something in the near future. I'm going to be sending out a follow-up email to all of you with all of these resources, as well as a survey um, with seeking your input on what are the subject areas that you might want um, more content in, that you might want to be a focus of future EdTech makerspaces, as well as what are the EdTech, what are the EdTech tools that you might want to see um, in terms of opportunities for teachers to be trained and or where you'd like to just see more easy to use and ready to use resources using that tool. Um, that's about it. Uh, this is less over than I thought we were gonna be midway through, but I just wanna, before I do that, I'm just gonna scroll down here on the website. Uh, there is a link to get the app. There's a link to the four um, levels uh, of the wakelets. And uh, here is a link that uh, is, I need to switch because this, this link is dead and I did not update it, but we're gonna put in a request right now um, for folks to access the resource list. You have it because it's in that wakelet and I'm going to make sure that I send that wakelet as part of the follow-up in case you didn't grab it. Uh, but before I go, and if you do uh, go onto the website, uh, here is a list of all of the educators who participated in this cohort. Um, I am so, so, so thankful uh, for their flexibility in terms of this project and, and sort of bearing with me as, as we got our ground bearings in terms of how to run this, but also just, again, as I've mentioned multiple times here, we're doing just astronomical amounts of work in the midst of a pandemic uh, and in the midst of trying to get ready for a new school year. So thank you to all of uh, these people. I do see some things. I'm gonna scroll up to see if there's any questions. Um, yes, all of these resources. So Kent, you asked a question. Would it be okay to embed some of these resources into our website? 
Uh, there's about a thousand things that I wish I could cover today. Um, but one, uh, because this project was sponsored by Creative Commons, um, all of the resources are Creative Commons licensed, which means that you have the ability to share these, to embed these, um, to reconfigure these in, in whatever way you see fit. Um, one of the things that you'll notice in all of the resources is that we provide uh, this sort of attribution at the bottom. So uh, as part of Creative Commons licensing, that's sort of just one of the rules, is that you are taking something that was created by somebody else, and so making sure that you provide proper attribution. And in this case, because we took content from the Reading Skills for Today's Adults Library, um, all of the resources, uh, the forms, the quizlets, and these wakelets all indicate that, that the content that's being used here comes from Reading Skills for Today's Adults, and that this is the license that it's, it's um, licensed under. But um, by way of embedding these, folks are gonna see those. So there's nothing more for you to do uh, in order to, to do that. Any other questions? I know there's Q&A questions. I'm scrolling right now through the chat. Um, so someone was having challenges with Quizlet. Um, you should either, if you're on your phone, be able to slide uh, left or right to get to the next one. Um, if you're on the uh, on here, there's arrows that allow you to advance to the next thing. So that's the answer to that question. Back to the chat to see if there's any other questions. Um, all right. Well, so be on the lookout for an email following up uh, today from me that again has all the links that we talked about just in case you forgot to grab them as well as a survey. I really do hope that you can provide your input because it, it is definitely going to drive um, our decision making in terms of what, a, what the next EdTech Makerspace project is going to be. Um, I will not have a how to copy the Google form into Google Classroom in there, but uh, I think I will be working to provide some guidance to educators in the near future um, that we put up on the um, website so that you know how to do that. And I will probably add some how-to videos even here in the Wakelet. Uh, this to me right now is going to be the instructor-facing resource. So we'll be working to share this out directly with instructors to have all the things available as you wish to slice and dice them, as well as some add-on trainings um, so folks know how to do specific things like the questions that have come up in here. So thanks for that feedback, that's really helpful. And with that, I'm going to let you get back to your Thursday afternoons. And I am extremely um, thankful again to the teachers and hope these resources are useful to everybody. So um, I'm sure we'll be in touch in the near future. Uh, until then, uh, good luck using these resources and uh, we will definitely be seeking feedback in terms of how they go. So thanks everybody.